Hello everyone, Michael here again with another video for my channel. So today is a little bit different from normal. I'm going to make a cost of living in Korea video. There are so many of these videos all over the world. There's so many of these videos on YouTube alone. Cost of living in Thailand, cost of living in Vietnam, cost of living anywhere, basically any country in the world. However, I feel that I want to give my personal experience of the cost of living here. I've been here for four years now, so I feel that I can give a little bit of an insight of what it's like when you first get here compared to what it's like now. So let's jump into it straight away and give you some ground rules. If you come here as an English teacher, you are more than likely going to work in a hog one when you first get here. It's a private academy. Now, these private academies, they provide housing for you nine times out of ten. So your housing is free. It's not included in the expenditure. There is options to gain your own housing but if you come here you're most probably not going to be doing that that's when you renew a contract for another year or go move to a different school where they're giving you a housing allowance let's focus on that the school is giving you your apartment if you're coming here with no experience you're coming here with your tefl or you're coming here with just your degree and no experience of english teaching i'll be very surprised if you started on more than 2.2 million one a month 2.2 million one a month is around about £1,433, £1,433 a month. Now, that is your wage. But that's not anything been taken off yet. Let's look at it. So, first thing first. Health. Your health tax. It's national insurance you have. To pay it it is not a voluntary thing you have to pay if you're working in south korea you have to pay your health tax it wasn't a thing a few years ago they've changed the law if you are on 2.2 million one you are looking to spend eighty-eight thousand one a month on that and that works out around about 57 pounds and 50 pence so that's already taken out of your account also, frustratingly for people from Britain, from Ireland, from Australia, you also have to pay into a pension. If you're from Canada and from the United States, you shall receive this pension once you leave the country. But um, uh, people from Britain, people from Ireland, people from Australia, people from New Zealand, you do not receive this pension even though you pay into it. People from South Africa have a choice to not pay into the pension, but we do. The pension is 105,001 a month, which works out at about £68 a month you have to pay. And that is money you will never see again. Unless you live in the country for 10 years and then claim the pension back after 10 years, you are not seeing that money again, unfortunately. It's just the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately, with that situation. Now that they're the expenditures, your tax is coming out of your wages, let's look at some things that you need which are also deductible from that wage. So what's the first thing that you need? You need a phone. You need Wi-Fi. I'm going to be nice and say you don't even need a television. You're going to sit at home and watch Netflix, watch YouTube, watch online shows in your downtime. If you are here only for one year, your one-year contract with the telephone company is going to be higher than if you sign a three-year contract. I'm currently on a three-year contract, so I pay for less. I pay for less than if it was a one-year contract. If you want to come here with a new handphone, if you want to come here with Wi-Fi and unlimited data, you're looking at around about 120,000 won a month for your Wi-Fi, internet uh, on your phone, data, and a good phone itself, not an old phone, one of the up-to-date phones. That works out at around about 78 pounds and 17 pence. It's called 78 pound. The next thing is getting around Seoul. I must add now that these expenditures are expenditures before this whole pandemic that we're going through. It's how I would normally spend my money in Seoul before we were locked in. Obviously, these days, I'm not going out. I'm not spending as much money because I'm not leaving the apartment nine times out of ten. The only time I leave my apartment is if I'm going to go shopping or I'm going to the local convenience store or I'm going to work. Now, uh, two years ago, my T-Money card, which is your travel card, is your bus, it's your uh, subway, in and around Seoul. 
I set aside 50,001 a month, which works out around about 33 English pounds. Your next one is going to be your maintenance. Now, even though your school will pay for your housing, nine times out of 10, you will have to pay for the gas and the electricity and the maintenance of the building itself. Now, these maintenance fees can really fluctuate depending on where you live and where you are, what type of accommodation. If you're in like a small villa type, you're not paying much, you're paying 30,000, 140,000, one maybe a month. If you're in an apartment complex, you might be 60 or 70. If you're in an office tower, which I am actually in, I pay between 130 and 150 a month. So let's say it's it's my situation, my scenario. I pay 140,000 one a month, which works out at around 91 pound, 92 pound a month. Your next thing you need to do is then you need to think about your gas. Now gas isn't strange here, it's normal in every country. In the summer times, you're not using enough, as much gas. You're not heating your homes as much in the summer as you are in the winter. Now, in the summertime, you can spend 10,001 on gas. But in wintertime, you could spend 90,001 on gas. So I've kind of met in the middle and said it's a, on average 50,001 a month, which is £33. Your home's heated, you've got gas to cook food, you've got a hot shower every day. Now, I want to add one more thing into this expenditure because I feel like this is the necessity expenditures. The last one is going to be food. Now, some people come here and they burn an egg. Some people come here and they wouldn't know any Korean restaurants because they come here and they save money and they eat food at home every day. Some people come here and they've got every single app on their phone to order delivery food. I'm not like that. I like to cook. I probably order takeout or I eat out maybe three, four times a month. That, that's been generous saying that. Now, I put aside 280,001 for the month for food, which works out around about 183 pound. Now, a lot of people go, oh, Michael, blooming heck, you spend a lot of money on food, but I like to cook every day. I like to use great ingredients. I do like my steak, I do like my lamb, I do like my chicken. So I order a lot of things offline, which you can't normally get in Korea. They, you have to order them online and bring them in. Um, so with them expenditure, folks, it, that works out about 833,001, which is about 543 pound. That's the necessity expenditure from your wage. So take that from your 1,433 and you're currently left with 889 pound. 889 pound you will have for the month, which is 1,366,001. Now let's have a look at a little bit of disposable income. It's merging the line as such. If you work in a hogwan, you work in kindergarten, you're more than likely going to have a lunch provided for you. Now let's say you don't have a lunch provided for you and you have to go out and get your lunch yourself. Let's say it's 500,000, 500,000 one a day, no, 5,000 one a day, which is about £3.30. Let's times that by five, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then times that by four. You're working out at around 100,000 won a month on your lunch, which works out around about 66 pounds English. It sounds a lot for lunch, but if you calculate in your head, you're probably paying more in the UK. Now, let's say you like a few pints on the weekend. You want to go out, but you miss your last train. Subway's very good here, but they're not 24 hours a day. Some people might have a gig in the centre of Seoul. Where it's a £10 taxi. Some people might live a little bit further out of Seoul, which is 30,001 taxi. Let's say it's a 30,001 taxi and you get that four times a week. Once again, I do need to add this is before the pandemic. Uh, I'm talking as if how I was living my life before the situation. You get a taxi four times a week, 30,001 a pop. That's 120,001 a month, which works out around about £78. Now, when you're going out, you're not sitting there drinking water, are you? You're drinking pints. Uh, it depends on where you go. If you go into your Western areas and drinking in your Western bars, it's going to be more expensive than if you go to traditional Korean areas and you're drinking with the locals, if you're eating in put chants and local areas. Let's say once a week you like to go to a Western area and then once a week you like to have uh, a Korean-style night out. I set aside 240,000 one a month 
which is about 156 pounds and 34 pence. Don't get me wrong, I like a pint. Some people might look at that and go, I could spend that in one evening. So this is just my little accumulation of things. So if you look at them, that's not your disposable income, but it kind of is. Take away that is 460,001 together, which is 299 pound, let's say 300 pound. So take that away from the, the wage you've got now, and you're currently now left with 590 pound. This is your disposable income. I like to save money whilst I'm here. I think it's very important to save a quarter of your wages. So let's take 500,001 away from that. That will work out £333. So you're currently now left with £254.50 for the rest of your month in Korea, which is 406001 That doesn't sound like a lot, but as I've explained to you, your food's paid for. Or your gas bill's paid for, your maintenance is paid for, your internet is paid for, your housing's already paid for, you don't need to think about that. Um, your lunch money's paid for, you've got two nights out a week on that. And you've got £400,000 just to settle you, £400,000 one just to settle you throughout the rest of the month. I must add that if you come here and you last a full contract, well, you should be doing the full contract regardless, um, if you last a full contract, you will get a severance. So you will get extra 2.2 million won on when your contract is finished. Now, it depends on your employer how they do this. They might pay you the moment your old contract is finished, or they might pay you the moment you leave the school, so you can accumulate it up over the few years. That is not been included in this monthly thing because you don't receive it until the very end, your last day in Korea or your last day on your contract. So, guys, I just wanted to give a bit of an insight of how much it is to live here and the expenses of what's really going on. I hope I found it, I hope you found it useful in some way. Uh, a lot of people have asked me questions, they've asked me, how do you survive here? I've heard Seoul's a very expensive city. And in truth, it can be, it can be, but I've been here for four years now. I know my way around things and I know how to save money and also quite enjoy myself at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, please like, subscribe. And if you like more of these videos, please let me know in the comments below and we can get something sorted. Okay, see you soon.